Good afternoon. Today is the last um, objective for Unit 10. Today is 10.1D, and the topic is solving trig equations using trig identities. Uh, we will be doing this note in two parts. The essential question for today is when, when trig equations contain two or more types of trig expressions, how do I use identities to help me solve the equations? Okay, again, when using trig equations containing uh, two or more types of trig expressions, how do I use identities to help me solve them? So first thing I'm going to mention is this. You're going to be using substitution and your trig identities. So here's the advice you should write down. Maybe over here in this little left-hand section, a reminder. When substituting with a trig ID, I must check for extraneous solutions. I'll say it one more time. When substituting with a trig identity, a trig ID, I must check for extraneous solutions. For example, say I have a, don't write this down, just watch. Okay, so say I have a problem like this. Cotangent theta plus tangent theta equals mm, two. Okay, so let's say I have that equation and I have to solve it. Well, first of all, there's two types of trig expressions here. I get cotangent and tangent. That makes this problem difficult to solve without a trig identity. So the first thing I might do is replace cotangent with its reciprocal identity. Don't write this down, you're just watching. 1 over tangent theta plus tangent theta equals 2. And then solve it so that it's only talking in tangent. But remember this, cotangent has restrictions, yes? And I just removed cotangent from the equation. So after I solve this equation, I might have to plug in all the answers that I get to make sure that I don't hit one of those, extra, those restrictions for my cotangent. So that's an example of using a trig identity. Now I'm not going to do one that's that basic in your notes. I will be using like Pythagorean identities. So we'll remember those. But before we do that, I do want to tell you a few things. First, these problems are multiple steps to solve. And I'm talking 10 steps, 15 steps. It's a lot. Remember that you're using algebra and you're using your knowledge of the unit circle. You're using all of that knowledge put together to solve these equations. Now on top of that, we're adding your knowledge of your trig identities. And on top of that, you have to check your answers. It's a lot. So first let me review I, what I believe is the most important algebra skill that will help expedite the process a little bit. And here it is. If I give you a term like this, a binomial A plus B quantity squared, <clears throat> which you should know automatically does not equal A squared plus B squared. You should automatically know that. <clears throat> I'm going to come over here and write this. A plus B times a plus b. That's what that means. Now, if I want to take all the steps algebraically and I don't want to skip steps, then I may write it out and I'd multiply. Wait, just watch, don't write. That's a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared. Simplify, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Do you see how many steps that took? Three. Beyond this, it took three steps. So what I want to do is create one step by using the formula for squaring a binomial. 
So this is the formula that, set, that you can just learn to use, practice. It says this, square the first term, keep the sign, 2 times the first term times the second term, always add, square the second term. It's all, that's the same answer as I got over here. I proved it, but it's nice to just know the process. Now it changes if it's a subtraction, quantity squared, but it only changes in one place. The first sign, yeah. It's a squared minus 2ab, always plus b squared, okay? So kind of like when you're working on factoring cubes, same idea. If you know the formula and you have it written out, it helps you eliminate some steps. So that's the algebra <clears throat> that I believe is important. The other algebra thing that I would remind you is once you get your equation all in the same trig, like they're all of your expressions are sine or cosine or tangent, whatever, if you want to convert it to an algebra problem by letting, say, sine theta equal x, and then solve using your algebra skills, and then re-substitute in, you can do that. I'm not doing that, but you can do that. Okay, Pythagorean identities that will be useful. So because we are using trig identities. Okay, so here they are. We'll start with um, one equals sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. We know this is a true statement. It is the identity of the Pythagorean identity <clears throat> that is always true on the unit circle. All the time, actually. But a lot of times we're not solving the equation. We're solving the equation for sine or we're solving the equation for cosine. So you need to remember that you can manipulate this equation, reformat it. So if I solve this for sine squared theta. That means I'm subtracting cosine squared theta to the other side. So 1 minus cosine squared theta. So remember that you can manipulate the equation. And sometimes you don't want a sine squared. You just want a sine theta. So if you take the square root of both sides, you can also use this form of the equation. Sine theta equals square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. And please remember, you cannot simplify 1 minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. That is the difference of squares. It is not a perfect square. You cannot take its square root. It is simplified. So say I wanted to replace some sines with some cosines. I would replace sine squared theta with a 1 minus cosine squared theta. Or I could replace a sine theta with the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. I could also decide I want to replace cosine with sine. So I can also rearrange this problem. So it says cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Or I could also take the square root. Cosine theta equals the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So those are all the forms of Pythagorean identity 1 that could be useful. Of course, later on in life, we could make it more complex. But for now, this is what we need. So that's a Pythagorean identity that you will probably use one form of this Pythagorean identity often. And guaranteed, you'll use it on the test. <clears throat> Another Pythagorean identity is this one. Secant squared theta equals 1 plus tangent squared theta. God bless you. Well, this is Pythagorean identity 2. And so say I want to replace a secant with a tangent, I can do that, or secant squared. Or maybe I just want to replace secant theta. So if I take the square root, we're almost done. 1 plus tangent squared theta, square root of 1 plus tangent squared theta. But say I don't want to replace secant with tangent, I want to replace tangent with secant. So I could also solve this equation or reformat this equation so it says tangent squared theta equals. That would require me to subtract 1 to the other side. So that would be secant squared theta minus 1 
And maybe I don't want tangent squared, maybe I want tangent. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get tangent theta equals secant squared theta. The square root, excuse me, the square root is secant squared theta minus 1. Of course, there's one more. And I'll write it down. And then you will write the other three forms. You can just pretty much mirror what we did for Pythagorean identity 2. Here's Pythagorean identity 3 that says this. Cosecant squared theta equals 1 plus cotangent squared theta. Remember, cosecant goes with cotangent. <clears throat> okay, so write the other three forms quickly. And then we will do problem number 1, and that's it for today. And we got to move quick because we have seven minutes left to class. All right, so you should have cosecant theta equals square root, 1 cotangent squared, 1 plus cotangent squared theta, cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta minus 1, and cotangent theta equals square root of cosecant squared theta minus 1. All right, so that's what we need. Here's what we're going to do. We have this problem that says find the solutions of the equation that are in the interval closed at 0, open to 2 pi. So the answers are in radians. And our equation is in two trig expressions. We have cosine and we have sine. So we have to decide, you have to decide when you're solving these problem, problems because there are multiple paths to the correct answer. Which of the two expressions you wish to substitute and remove from the problem? And then isolate it. So I'm choosing to replace cosine theta with a sine theta. So first, my advice, make that decision. Now, because it's cosine and sine, those are not reciprocal identities, but they do exist in Pythagorean identity together. So I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate cosine because I'm going to replace it with a sine term. So I'm going to get cosine theta equals 1 plus sine theta. You with me? I'm just adding sine theta to the other side. And I'm isolating cosine theta. You with me? Now, I it's difficult to solve this equation when it's in two different trig values, or two different trig expressions. So I'm going to replace cosine of theta. I'm going to go up here to my trig identity and see what cosine of theta equals. Up here. Cosine of theta equals the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So I'm going to grab my red pen to show my substitution. I am going to replace cosine of theta with the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So substitution using the Pythagorean, that is not R. That is not supposed to be an R. Pythagorean identity. Okay, so I'm replacing. And this makes the problem a little bit simpler to solve because now all in the same trig expression. But I substituted. I removed a cosine, which means I'm going to have to check my answers when I'm done. Okay, at this point, if you prefer to rely on your algebra skills, you can say I'm going to let sine theta equal x and replace all your sine thetas with x's. Up to you. I'm not going to do that. Now what I want to do is solve for sine theta. That's my job when I'm solving a trig equation. So how do I get this sine squared theta out from underneath the square root? That's right. So I'm going to rewrite it in this step one time. 1 minus sine squared theta equals 1 plus sine theta. I want that to be a true statement. And then I'm going to grab my blue pen to show that I'm going to make a change to this equation. So I'm going to square both sides. Oops. I want to move that. wanted to move that. All right. So let's simplify here. So squares and square roots undo each other? Inverse, so 1 minus sine squared theta 
equals, ooh, look at that. I'm squaring a binomial. So a squared is, one squared is, one, keep the sign, two times a times b. So two times one times sine squared, or sine theta, two sine theta, always plus. And then sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. Okay, so that's just using that little algebra trick that I should, or rule that I showed you. Okay, so here we have it. All in sine, I can now, should be able to solve for sine. So what am I going to do? It looks quadratic to me. So maybe make it equal zero? Factor of five my zeros. So I think I'll take these two terms to the right. So I'm going to subtract one and add sine squared theta. And subtract one and add sine squared theta. So, you know, line up your like terms. Do some vertical math here. One minus one is zero. Negative sine squared plus sine squared equals zero. So that's zero. That cancels that out. And leaves it with two sine theta plus two sine squared theta. Right? Because you get one sine squared theta plus one sine squared theta. That's two sine squared thetas. Oh my gosh, we got to hurry. The bell's going to ring. Okay, so here we go. What should I do? Factor out what? Don't, don't, I'm not finished. Two sine theta, right? They both have a two sine theta. If I divide a two sine theta out of two sine theta, I'm left with one. If I divide a two sine theta out of two sine squared theta, it leaves me with sine theta. Now we can find our zeros. So two sine theta equals zero. And one plus sine theta equals zero. So sine theta equals zero, and sine theta equals negative one. Well, that's step one of solving a trig equation. Now we have to solve for theta. So unit circle. Remember, sine is your y coordinate. So we're trying to figure out when is my y equal to zero. That's over here at zero radians, and over here at pi radians. So that takes care of sine theta equals zero. So here's what I know. So far I think theta equals zero and pi. But sine theta also equals negative one. That happens down here. At where? Three pi over two. So listen folks, because the bell rang. When you get home, the first thing you have to do is play the rest of this video because we stopped to check our solutions. And then you're going to do problems one through three. Okay, so as I mentioned, when you use substitution to solve, like a trig identity to solve one of these equations, you do have to check for extraneous solutions. So we have three solutions that we found here. So let's plug them into the original equation. So let's let theta equal zero, plug that into the original equation, which doesn't start with sine. So the cosine of 0 minus the sine of 0 should equal 1. If it doesn't, we have to throw out 0 as a solution. So cosine of 0 is here. That's 1. Sine of 0 is here. That's 0. And 1 minus 0 is 1. Check. So we can keep 0 as a solution. Now let's check theta equals pi. So when theta equals pi, we get the cosine of the... Uh, pi minus the sine of pi equals 1. So I'm going over here, cosine of pi is negative 1, and the sine of pi is 0. Negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. Negative 1 does not equal 1. Therefore, pi is extraneous. The last check, we have theta equals uh, 3 pi over 2. And we have to plug that in. So we'll do cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus sine of 3 pi over 2 equals 1. Substitute in the values. Cosine is of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So 0 minus negative 1 equals not 0. Equals 1. And that's a double negative. 1 equals 1. Check. Therefore, we can keep the solution 3 pi over 2. So our solutions, 0 and 3 pi over 2. And so don't forget to check your solutions.
and have your values ready on your unit circle so that you can plug values in quickly to check your uh, radian solutions. All right, so that's it for today. Again, do problems one through three on the assignment on 10.1D on Canvas and come to class ready with questions tomorrow. We will finish this note page as well tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good day.